Hi, I'm Don Wilson, the Tech Doctor. Many electrical products are sold to the end user in one of two primary ways. It's either sold to and installed by the manufacturer or the OEM, or sold to a retailer where an end user or qualified installer purchases it for an aftermarket installation at a service center. There are also some do-it-yourselfers who dare to install it themselves. There are pros and cons to each option. First, the OEM installation. Whether you're dealing with a boat, RV, commercial truck, or even an ambulance, Optioning an inverter is generally available at the OEM level. One major benefit of the OEM install is that important installation parameters such as the cable size and distance of the inverter from the battery compartment, compartment size and cooling are all specified and documented and are part of a process that delivers production consistency. This results in a professional, relatively safe and efficient installation. On the challenging side, OEMs sometimes offer multiple choices like power levels, waveform, charging capabilities, etc. for a power inverter. The customer is faced with multiple options to choose from, which requires knowledge of how the electrical system is going to be used prior to ordering. Those who don't know often feel the safest option is to go with the biggest or best option, which usually translates to higher cost. On the other hand, there's the qualified installer. The term qualified installer always makes me uneasy. I always wonder, qualified by whom? If you need an inverter installed after the vehicle has been built, it's imperative that you find a service center that either has a good reputation specializes in inverter installs, or has a stamp of approval from the vehicle or inverter manufacturer, or better yet, all three. Realize that every service center install differs from the one before. There may be the temptation from the crew to use similar components for different installations. For instance, if you're having a 3,000 watt inverter installed, and the last vehicle they worked on had a 2,000 watt inverter, will they use the leftover parts from one for the next? What size battery cable is being used? Will they use the same cable for both installations regardless of a difference in cable lengths? These are cost savings to the installer, but may translate to problems for the user. Do it yourself or self-installation. If you plan on doing an inverter installation yourself, first assess your skills, knowledge and experience. Where do you stand on a scale of 1 to 10 as far as proven qualifications and experience is concerned? If you're not an 8 or higher, please back away slowly and put the multimeter down. In all seriousness, electricity is dangerous. If you're working on a 12 volt lighter plug on a 300 watt inverter for your laptop, well then knock yourself out. But please, for larger inverters that require hard wiring, fusing, voltage drop calculations, and knowledge of UL standards and the National Electrical Code for AC and DC systems, I cannot stress enough how important it is to get it right the first time. So to conclude, the bottom line is safety. The OEM install may not be the most cost friendly, but that slight increase in cost translates to system insurance for longer reliability and safety. The service center or dealer install is acceptable, as long as the staff is knowledgeable and competent in installing complex electronics. By all means, please totally avoid self-installations unless you are skilled and knowledgeable about the requirements for performing these specific types of installations and have studied the operation and instruction guides. For more information or for other Tech Doctor articles, go to www.xantrex.com and click on Tech Doctor.